Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to today's episode of The Shout, which is live every Monday right here on the Buffalo Fanatics Facebook at 1 p.m., and I am your host, Joe DeRosa. If you went on a spring break this past week, I hope you enjoyed yourself. My break was a little bit cold, but still a lot of fun. And if you went out for St. Paddy's Day, then I hope you had a good time with that as well. St. Paddy's Day was a very, very fun time down in the city. Don't remember too much of it, but I guess that means it was a good time. So I want to apologize for not being live last week. I made the unfortunate mistake of posting in the group and not on the page. Something I realized was pretty stupid, but I realize now this is where I got to post. And now the shows are going to be live. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in with me here on Mondays at 1 p.m. So. Basically, before we get into today's show, I want everyone who's viewing this video, all 12 of you, all of you who are going to come in, to do two things for me. Now, the first thing I want you to do is click the link that's in the title of this uh, Facebook Live. That is our song of the day. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, our song of the day is basically just to get you to listen to more music. I love music, and I figured I could share it with all of you guys, things you might not have been exposed to yet. Whatever it may be, I want to share it. And today's song is a song called Feather by a producer who uh, he passed away uh, a couple years back, but he's one of my favorite producers of all time. His name is New Jabez. He's been uh, a producer on a couple of shows, including one of my favorite shows of all time called Samurai Shampoo. I love his music, and I want you guys to like his music too, so I put the link right there in the title. Now, more football-related discussion. The second thing I want you guys to do for me is tell me, would you, given the current situation in the NFL draft where the Bills sit and based on what the New York Jets just did, would you move up to the number two spot if it meant that you had to give up a lot? What would you do? What would be your price? You know, what are your terms in that? So progressively, whenever you feel like commenting it during this Facebook Live, just put it down there and let me know what you think. I will respond to all of you by the end of today's show. And I will be sure to post today's link, today's podcast that I'm recording right now on my Shout Engine as well as tune in later on in the day. So stay tuned for that. But now let's get into today's show. So many members of Buffalo Fanatics have been discussing this on our YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. And I wanted to give my input on it as well because it's a very big topic. So obviously over the weekend, we saw that the Jets traded up to number three. They made a big mess for us in the fact that they gave a huge haul to go get that coveted number three pick from the Colts. Now the Colts are sitting at six and now the Jets have prime position to take literally anyone besides Barkley and maybe one quarterback. But this doesn't necessarily bode well for Buffalo because obviously we were trying to get up there and get that pick. We don't have it. So now our only options are to either go for that number two, to go for number four, or as many of you are suggesting now, stay put at number 12. So today's show is going to be kind of just an overview of this situation, the pros and cons to each idea whether we move up or whether we don't move up and my opinion on the matter because I really want to share that because I feel a little strongly about the situation right now. So basically, is it really worth it? Is it worth it to move up to number two or to number four? And you have to look at kind of the pros and cons of the situation. Now, let's say in a hypothetical that the New York Giants want to trade with the Bills and try to go down in the draft because they think that they're always to fill. So what are the pros on if Buffalo actually ends up moving up to that spot? So in my opinion, the Bills really never get the chance to pick in the top 10. During this drought, during this era of no playoffs, we've seen that this team usually bottoms out somewhere in the 10 to 20 range. They never get that opportunity for a top 10 pick. So now if the team decides that the Giants are willing to trade and they're going to make a move to get to number two, this is your chance to get your potential franchise quarterback. There are a lot of prospects in this draft that are coveted very highly. One of my favorite quarterbacks in this draft is Josh Rosen, who I believe is the most complete passer in the draft. And he will be there for you at number two because I believe the Browns are either taking Barkley, Josh Allen, or Sam Darnold at number one. I don't think Rosen is in their sight. So if you make this trade, you have the potential to get your franchise quarterback. You know that he is going to be in your possession at the number two pick. You also know 
another pro in this situation is that you have leverage over the Jets, the Cardinals, the Broncos. You don't have to worry about them anymore. There's a lot of fear going on now that after the Jets traded to number three, that now Arizona and Denver, their mouths are foaming for that number two pick. Their mouths are foaming for one, basically any way to just keep up in this quarterback race. So now if you get to that number two pick, you know that there is no worry whatsoever. You have at least, I would say like an, I mean, I think it's a lock, but some people might say 90% chance of getting you Josh Rosen, of getting you Josh Allen, who I hope they don't get. But it's very nice knowing that. It's very comforting because for a team that's been in the middle for so long, to get that spot right there, right after number one, you know that that guy is going to be there, at least one of the prospects that you want. Then... There are multiple names that are coveted for the Bills, too. Multiple names that they have been linked to. They said they love Sam Darnold. They said that Baker Mayfield looked good. They said uh, Josh Rosen looked good. They said Josh Allen looked good. No matter what, you're getting one of those. At number two, you are getting one of those players. And, you know, for a team that's been linked to so many quarterback names, it's good that you have the chance to pick literally anyone you want in that situation. Now, some of the cons, you have to excuse me, I'm stuttering a bit. Some of the cons for this situation, as many of you are mentioning, and it's pretty apparent that this is going to happen should they make this trade, it's going to be a king's ransom. They are going to have to give up so much. If you just look in the past couple of years at some of the trades that have been pulled off for that number one pick, it's basically giving up all of your draft capital. You're giving up your first rounds, one of your seconds, one of your thirds next year. In my opinion, it would that's basically what I believe would be the haul for that number one pick. You're basically giving up two firsts this year, your one second round pick, one of your third round picks, and then something next year, maybe a 2019 second or a 2019 third. And that's a very intimidating trade to make because you are putting all your stock into one player. So there's a con to that because you're giving up a lot of potential prospects that you could be drafting because you want to get this franchise guy. Now, you are also not very sure if this guy's going to pan out. I see someone is making the case that Josh Rosen might not pan out, and none of us know for sure. Josh Rosen is not a guarantee. Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson, Mason Rudolph, even if they waited for Kyle Aletta, whoever. None of these guys are guaranteed to be great quarterbacks. That's what the draft is. It's a complete and total crapshoot. It's a complete chance that this guy could be good if you develop him right, if you give him the right situation. So you do not have any certainty that making this move is going to be worth it until this person goes under center and proves themselves. And if they don't prove themselves, then you gave up all this capital just to find out that this guy isn't the guy you need and you wasted valuable picks that you could have asserted to other positions. And I get the intimidation factor for that. And I get why a lot of people are opposed to making the move the same way I get why people are pro to making the move. So another thing too, and this is an argument that I've been seeing get thrown around, is that if the Bills stay at number 12, they still are going to have quarterback options, and those quarterbacks might have the same ceiling as those that could be picked at 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Lamar Jackson and Mason Rudolph are the mo probably the most likely, in my opinion, lock candidates to be there at number 12 if the Bills stay put. And for, in all honesty, who's to say that Mason Rudolph might not be, be or might end up being better than Josh Rosen, might end up being better than Sam Darnold. We don't know this for sure. Now, I'm going to say this right now. I'm not a big Mason Rudolph fan. I do like Lamar Jackson, and if they did stay put and ended up drafting him, I wouldn't be totally upset. But we don't know if these guys are going to end up panning out better than the guys in the top five. So if that's the case, why move up there, waste your capital, if you could get someone who could produce the same exact way right there at number 12. So now... With those pros and cons in mind, before we get to the end, before I get to my opinion, is it likely that the Giants would make this move? And I talk about the Giants specifically because I think if they were to make a move, this is where they would want to go because they want to leapfrog the Jets. They don't want the Jets to be in front of them, even if it means that the Jets are going to take a prospect that they don't have their eye on. I think number two is the spot, and I've been saying this for a while, that they're going to try to move to. So would the Giants be interested in doing it? So we all know that one of the biggest needs that the Giants have right now is that they need help on the offensive line. And they've been eyeing plenty of prospects in this draft. But in my opinion, I think there is going to be plenty of offensive line help there at number 12. And plus, they have a lot of other positions they need. They need another young running back because they just signed 30 – one-year-old Jonathan Stewart to a huge contract. They need another young running back to go behind that line, another weapon. And people link them to Saquon Barkley, but 
Running backs are a diamond dozen in the draft. You don't need a Saquon Barkley if there is plenty of running back talent in this draft, which there is. So in my opinion, I think the Giants would be likely to trade down knowing that there's options there, that they don't need to stay at number two, that it's not vital. It's not a complete and utter failure if they just don't take Barkley or a lineman at number two. I think they could get either of those positions addressed at number 12 or even a linebacker or even help in their secondary, which I know they're going to need. So in my opinion, I think the Giants are going to make the move should the price be right. And in my opinion, I keep saying in my opinion, but this is just going off things that I wrote down. They really do need all the help they can get with draft picks in this draft. They need everything. So the Bills have a ton of capital, and we know that they have the ammo to make a trade if they want it. And I think the Giants would want to move down and just use all those picks to build, fill the holes that they need. So I think it's likely. And I do think that if the price is right, the Giants would make the move. So do I think it's worth it? to move up to number two. Do I think that this is the move that the Bills need to make because it's a pivotal point? And I'm going to say yes. I do think that the Buffalo Bills should move up to number two, and here's why. So for so many years in this playoff drought, for so many years in every single draft, it feels that Buffalo has tried to at least to some degree play it safe. Whether they stay put at some number like 13 or 16 or they make like a very minor pick or a minor trade-up or something like that, it feels that they try to play it safe. And I know people might bring up the Sammy Watkins pick where they gave up a haul for that, but Sammy Watkins was the most coveted receiver in the draft, and I like the move that they made. I think the team needs to stop belittling themselves and make that move. You do not win in this league, and I emphasize win championship level, not just games, because you can obviously still win games if your quarterback situation isn't fully fleshed out. You are not going to get a championship you're not likely to get a championship without your franchise caliber quarterback. And you can make that case for Nick Foles with the past Super Bowl, but who got them to the playoffs? Carson Wentz, who's proving himself to be quite an elite quarterback with his ability in the pocket, his ability to move, his ability to throw. Everything there is franchise quarterback level. You build around this type of player. You do not build around a running back. You do not build around a D lineman. You build around a quarterback. That is the most important position on your team. And the Buffalo Bills need a steady quarterback that they can depend on for years to come because we have had or we have not had that in so many years we've had Tyrod who's been our longest tenured starter and God knows how long and even then he wasn't elite he was just good enough good enough to hold us over and then you look at the guys that they have drafted in the first round your EJ Manuel your JP Lossman who were picked after that top 10 and they didn't pan out well at all and they didn't take a, uh, a risk in the top 10 now granted there weren't many great quarterbacks in E.J. Manuel's draft class, and but J.P. Lossman's class, you could have found yourself in the top ten, made that move to get Big Ben, to get Phillip Rivers, to get Eli Manning, but they didn't, and it bit them in the butt later on when they didn't make the playoffs and the drought continued to run. I think you need to make this trade. I think there's plenty of quarterback talent there at number two, and your franchise guy is up there, whether it be Rosen, whether it be Darnold, hell, whether it be Josh Allen, even though I don't agree with that. I think you need to make that move. It's time for the franchise to stop shooting themselves in the foot and to start taking the risk and find the guy that they need to build around to win more games. You've seen teams that have had depleted rosters that haven't exactly ended up, even with that roster, they still made it very far or got over a hump that no one thought they would. And my favorite example of this <laughs> is Andrew Luck in the Colts. That roster, their best receiver was T.Y. Hilton, and I guess Dante Moncrief, but either way, it wasn't a great roster. Their defense had a lot of holes in it. Without Andrew Luck, that team bottoms out at maybe 4-12, and 5-11, and 11, but they made it to the AFC Championship, and sure, they got decimated by the Pats, but the fact that they even got to that point is remarkable, and it shows how good Andrew Luck is. And unfortunately, they were never able to build around Andrew Luck, due to injury and just the fact that that franchise really never gave him. Well, they did try to give him the help, but it just hasn't panned out yet with all those young O-linemen. But even then, a depleted roster with Andrew Luck still made it to the AFC Championship. And then you look at all the years of Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. And that team, had they had more years of an elite defense, could have been so much better than what they were. But even then, on a team that you just saw Brett Hundley run get to 8-8, eight and eight, Aaron Rodgers makes that in the 11-5, 12-4, 13-3 team.
They're th- he's that good of a quarterback. He's your franchise guy. And while they're not building around him, he's the type of quarterback that you do build around. So I think it's important for Buffalo to go ahead and get your franchise guy right there in top 10 and build around it. Yes, I know we don't have a lot of receiving talent this year. Yes, there are in- there's problems and concerns around the offensive line. I get it. But you got to get that guy in the draft and then build around him in the future. That is the only way you are going to have prolonged success. I don't want the Buffalo Bills to end up like the Houston Texans with Matt Schaub, where your defense is great and it looks like you have that chance to go to the Super Bowl and then end up bottoming out because your quarterback couldn't compete in the playoffs. Even the Jags, yeah, they put up a lot of points, but what would they do without Leonard Fournette? And, I mean, Blake Bortles wasn't able to get him over the hump when they took Fournette out of the game plan. Blake Bortles ended up sucking in the third and fourth quarter of that game, and they lost, and they let the Pats right back in the in the game because the offense couldn't stay on the field and the defense got tired out. You need a franchise quarterback who can adjust and get you over that hump. And I think that's what the Bills need right now. So that's my take on the matter. And I know that someone in here is mentioning that A.J. McCarron just got signed, but Real talk, A.J. McCarron is not your franchise quarterback. Yes, maybe he might be able to be a bridge option and play decently, but we've seen A.J. McCarron in pivotal points, and while he's played okay, he's not a franchise quarterback. He's later on in his career, and I just feel like he's just going to end up being average or maybe not even good at all. You need to go get that prospect, and you need to draft him up, and you need to work with him and build your franchise around him and get him going. That is my opinion on the matter, and I'm going to read some of the things that you guys are saying now. Obviously, you don't have to agree with me, Everyone's got their own opinion. I completely get that. So let's see what you guys got to say here. I'm seeing a lot of no's. <laughs> hey, listen, I understand the reservations. And as I said before, it's very scary to give up that much draft capital for one guy. I completely understand it. The Bills have a lot of position needs. They still need a middle linebacker. They might need more help with the D-line. They might need another center. They definitely need receivers. God, they need receivers. But when are you going to get this chance again? is my question. When are you going to have this much capacity to be able to make that move up and get that quarterback? Because I don't think they're going to have this for quite a long time. And that's my problem with why and why I think that they should move up. When are they going to have this again? It's just, it seems like right now with that extra pick from Kansas City and all your draft capital that you acquired through all these different trades in the offseason, you should just make the move, pull the trigger, get up there and get your guy. And even if he doesn't pan out, at least you took the risk. Now, I know that's not welcomed here, but that's just my opinion. So let's see here. Send the Kings ransom for number one. I don't think Cleveland's budging from that number one pick personally. I think they've made it clear that they want to stay put with um, possibly taking Saquon or getting a franchise quarterback then. Um, I think the Kings ransom is going to go to number two. Maybe it'll be around the same as what the Jets gave up to Indy, but I'm not 100% sure what it would entail. As I mentioned before, I think that the trade is going to be your two first-round picks, one of your seconds, one of your thirds, and then next year's. Let's see. Stay put, draft linebacker at 12, Rudolph at 22. I get it. We do need linebacker help, but just I don't think Mason Rudolph is a franchise quarterback. He's benefited from having a possible elite receiver in James Washington. I just don't think he's that great. And, I mean, I know that he's – I, I mean, I've just seen Coach talk about him and say he's nothing more than a second or third round pick. And I just, I don't, I'm not a Mason Rudolph fan, personally. I just don't think this offense would work with him. I think he needs good receivers to be good. He can't make plays on his own. Let's see. If we believe a specific guy is our guy, we got to. Nearly 90 mil next free agency, so yes, sell the farm as usual. Rookie quarterbacks blossom within one to three years after drafting anyways. So yes, we move up for whomever if it's one or two. Completely agree with that. And uh, I believe it was Rico who said that, uh, you know, there's not really a crazy free agency class next year. But even then, you might be able to find some quality guys who could you could work with Rosen or whoever they decide to pick at number two. And I, I'm fully on board with that idea. They have plenty of cap space. They're going to be able to make moves next year, a lot more moves than they made this year. And I think uh, having your franchise guy and letting him develop in that time span is the right move. Heck no. Ask for Andrew Luck. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. For one thing, the Colts are probably going to want more than what we would give up for a draft pick for Andrew Luck. It would be ridiculous. And he's got too many injury concerns to even think that's possible. I mean, the dude's shoulder, we don't even know if he's throwing at the beginning of the season this year. I don't think it's worth the risk for that much. And I know you might think that sounds hypocritical, but at least with a draft prospect, you know that what you're getting is someone you can develop. Andrew Luck's already had time in this league in a different system. And again, 
his injury concerns are outweighing any of the prospects, even though people complain about Rosen's injuries, which I don't even know how bad that could be if he gets to the NFL. We don't even know if they'll act up again. I'm not going to take that risk for Andrew Luck personally. I don't think he's worth it. Now, don't get me wrong. Andrew Luck is phenomenal when he's healthy, but again, when he's healthy. And he has just had a season where he was on and off. They didn't know what to do with him. They ended up putting him on IR. He didn't throw a single game, and I don't want to take that risk with him. Let's see. Stay put. I'm seeing stay put a lot. Rosen's my guy, though it's him or nobody for me. I wouldn't say him or nobody for me personally. I like Rosen a lot. He's my favorite quarterback in the draft. But I also do think I do think that you could get by if you got a guy like Baker Mayfield, your Sam Darnold, or your uh, Lamar Jackson. Um, Sam Darnold, I'm a little iffy on, though I do like his attitude. Um, Lamar Jackson, I think, is a very high ceiling. So I think if he were to come in and you know work well, he would be good. I think even though he's slightly in- inaccurate, he can still make that work. Although I think like the difference between a guy like him and Josh Allen is that I think Lamar Jackson can improve his accuracy issues. I think Josh Allen's just way over the radar, but people can disagree with me on that. Um, and Baker Mayfield, I'm just a big fan of Baker Mayfield. So I'd be okay with any of those four, but Rosen's definitely my number one guy. Bills will be fine, not worried. Unless quarterbacks go one, two, three, the Bills will get a guy. Maybe. Depends. If if they trade it to number four, I'd also be okay with that. I think it's a little more of a risk, though, because who knows, uh, you know, what what the Giants wound up doing at two. If we traded to four early and then Denver ended up trading to that second pick or Arizona traded to that second pick, I'd be a lot more concerned. But if the draft order stayed put with Cleveland, New York, Jets, and then Bills took four, then I think we'd be okay. I agree with that. Say, if Luck is injured, though, why haven't they traded him yet? I'm not sure. I think maybe it's fielding offers and just no one wants to pay the price. I think we've we've seen Andrew Luck when he's healthy, and we know he's a franchise quarterback. And I think I'm trying to think how to word this, they know Andrew Luck's good enough to get a big haul if he's healthy. But again, I think people are afraid to make the move because of the injury concerns, even though. You know, you know what you're getting when he's healthy. Who's to say he won't get injured again? Who's to say that won't be a prolonging injury? It's a very big risk with him. And if they're asking for too much, no one wants to jump the gun on that. Where will Baker fall, though? Some people have been discussing that there is the possibility that he could make it out of the top 10 picks. I don't think so at all. I actually think he would. I think the Jets are going to get him personally. I think the Jets want him the most. They should express interest. They were at his pro day. He would fit well there. Um, if he didn't go there, though, if Denver stays put at their position, I think they're going to take him. I I don't think he's making it out of the top ten, even though some people say he will. Let's see. AJ is going to surprise a lot of people. No, 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 no. Listen, I, like I said, I get it. I completely understand why people don't want to trade. It's it's a risky move. I just want to see this team make a move. I just want to see them get that franchise guy. I'm just so sick of being in the middle all the time and getting, oh, this guy's like, the sixth best quarterback prospect, or they might go get Kyle Alletta and let him develop. Like, I don't want that. I want a coveted prospect and just to see what he does. Who is your guy? Tune in late. Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen's my guy. People will disagree with it, but I think he's the most complete passer in the draft. He shows a lot of poise in the pocket. He's got a great arm. I really like his attitude too, and I just think he would be good in Buffalo. And that whole Cleveland situation got blown out of proportion for me. I think um, his words got misconstrued. And I just think he'd be a good fit in Buffalo. And Dable would make it work because Dable has a very versatile offensive system. And he's very, he has very simple style of coaching. He makes it easy for players to understand what plays are going to happen. So I think Rosen would do really well in a system like that. I think really any quarterback could, but Rosen's my guy for it. Rosen's my guy. So nobody, let's see here. Keep them coming, guys. Seriously, keep these comments coming. I'm loving this right now. Let's see. We got people saying stay put, we got people saying move. It's a lot of different things. It's a lot of fun to talk about this. But, yeah, I'm de- I'm definitely all for moving. Now, don't get me wrong. If they stay put at 12 and 22, I'm not going to be pissed. You know, I'm not going to come on here and, you know, curse the Buffalo Bills. You know, I get why they would want to play it safe. And, I mean, you do need linebacker help. You do need another receiver. And I know they've been talking to uh, – or they've been eyeing receivers. I think they only talked to Pettis. I don't know if they've talked to anyone else today. But, again – if they stay put, whatever, I do want them to move up, though. So, guys, tech, like I said before, I don't know if you were here in the beginning of this, but check out today's song of the day. If you're a hip-hop fan, I think it's a great song, and you would really like to listen to it, go check it out. If you're not into hip-hop, but you're thinking, hey, maybe I should start, the link's right there in the title, and I think it's a great song, and it's soulful hip-hop, so it's not 
It's not shenanigans that people might not like. That's it. So if we like Jackson, where do we take him? Where does he fall? Um, I'd say... I'd say that they. Mm, I don't want him to. I don't want to think that they would take him at twelve, but I think to play it safe, they would. I think that he would probably be the twelfth pick, and then twenty-two they would designate to either linebacker or D tackle. Um, I think it, that one would be dependent on who's on the board. If they think that all the quarterback needy teams are gone and that no one's going to try to scoop them up, then they would probably take linebacker at twelve and then get him with twenty-two. If they're concerned that he might get taken before then, they might try to make a move or. They might try to just stay put and take Mason Rudolph if they like him too. So I'm going to say it's likely that if they stay at 12, you know, if, if they stay at 12, they're taking linebacker and they'll take him at 22 and hope that he doesn't go to any other team. I don't really know any other quarterback needy teams that are picking 10 and 20. So, yeah. And what is my take on Lamar Jackson? I like Lamar Jackson a lot. I get the concerns with his accuracy issues, but first off, whoever said he's a short is an idiot. He's not short. Lamar Jackson, six foot three. You can definitely see over the pocket. So there's one thing, if you're comparing him to Tyrod Taylor, that you need to bury right now. He has the height. He has a fantastic arm. I'm just trying to organize my thoughts. He has a fantastic arm. The dude has a cannon, and he's able to make throws on the run really well, which was what I like about him. Now, he um, he has this issue if he's in the pocket. He can get shook and be inaccurate. His ball placement is a little shaky. I remember, um, if you guys haven't checked it out, Cover 1 did a really good breakdown of him and I really enjoyed reading it because it shows basically everything about Lamar Jackson's game but they mentioned that his placement's a little off and I agree with that after watching a lot of his tape that sometimes when he's pressured in the pocket he won't be accurate but I think that's something that you could develop really well I think just give him a good O-line and watch him run I think he would be work really well in this type of offense so it's like I said before if they take Lamar Jackson at number 12 I won't be upset about that outside of quarterback what do you think is the Bills greatest need if they don't get content, it's receiver, man. I mean, we have Zay, we have Calvin Benjamin, and people have a lot of hope in Rod Streeter and Brandon Riley, but, like, they, I think they just need one more solid deep threat, especially if Thompson leaves, because apparently Thompson's been talking to Dallas and other teams. So, personally, I'd say receiver's the biggest need. I think middle linebacker's there, too. Those are there, too, but you can get receiving talent in the second round. So that's why I'm saying that the first round for the Bills might be more quarterback or linebacker or D-tackle in that range. D-tackle was a much more pressing need. I think they could still use a little more depth on that line or more competition. But linebacker and receiver are their biggest two. For me, receiver is the number one. Let's see. Bills need to find out from the Browns what it will take to move to number one. Then pay the damn bill. They traded all those folks away for a quarterback, so use it. Leave a tip, too. <laughs> I don't think Cleveland's budging from that number one spot, Chris. I, I, It would be cool to see, but I think number two is your best bet. And it's, I think also a thing that didn't get really talked about was Gettleman and the Gettleman-Bean connection. You know, they have a history. They might be able to work something out. I think Cleveland knows where they're at right now, and they're not going to give up that number one pick, especially with the free agents they signed. They know what team they're building now, and they want that surefire best prospect in the draft right there. And don't get me wrong, if they trade it down, they'd get a ton of draft picks, but I think they just want to go number one overall. All right. I'm going to be on for a couple more minutes, guys, so keep them coming. I, keep, I definitely want to keep hearing your takes. You gotta, I got to apologize if I'm stuttering a lot. It's still a little early in the morning. It's been a long weekend, so I'm just kind of recovering. Is that a quarterback? Let's see. What if we don't move from 12 and trade up with the 22nd? That's interesting. They're, they're definitely – that's definitely a possibility. And it's, should they do that, I think then my previous point's going to stand. They're going to do Lamar Jackson or Mason Rudolph and then defensive help. I think with that, they're way more likely to take linebacker at 12 uh, at that point because they're going to be a lot more comfortable waiting for Lamar because I don't think in that range in 10 to 20 there's going to be a team that needs him as much. So I can see it happening. I don't know if they will. It depends on what teams are going to give up for it. But, yeah. So who do you think the Jets are taking? Baker Mayfield. Definitely. That's that's my number one for them, unless it's been a smoke screen this whole time. Again, just want to clarify, I don't know for sure who they're going to take. Like, this isn't, this isn't like a 100% guarantee that you're going to see this on draft day. Everything I'm saying is my own opinion. But based on what I've been reading and looking into, it seems that the Jets love Baker Mayfield. Whether it's a smoke screen or not, I don't know. But I think that's the guy they're going to take. Um, and I, I don't like I don't blame them. I like Baker Mayfield a lot. 
you know, people say his height's an issue, but I mean, look at the success Russell Wilson and Drew Brees have had in the league and then get back to me on that. If he develops right, that dude's a competitor and I know he's going to try to make it work in New York. And he plays with a huge chip on his shoulder too. So we'll see. I think another thing we should note is, um, and I saw a really interesting thing this morning, that the Jets might have paid a bit too much. And you got to remember, these past two years, they've just been shooting at the wall trying to get a damn quarterback. You know, Bryce Petty, Christian Hackenberg, you signed Josh McCown, then you signed Tred- Teddy Bridgewater. Now you're looking at cutting one of those two guys and bringing in a rookie. It just seems so much. It's just like they're consistently knocking on the door at every quarterback they see until they get one that works. And, I mean, it's a very aggressive approach. But I think another thing, too, is, you know, there is that small chance that maybe they shock the world and don't even take a quarterback, which I don't think is likely. But you just announced that Josh McCown is going to be your starter. You signed Bridgewater and you still have Hackenberg, who has some starting experience. It just seems like you've tried so long to get like a quarterback. Maybe they'll just wait, get another one in a low round and take the best player available, which would be really funny if they did that, because I saw a stat today where of the three picks the Jets had in the top 10, none of them made a Pro Bowl, so that's hilarious. So if you need a feel-good story, there's one right there. Take Calvin Ridley at 12 and trade up from 22, and Bills could get a quarterback. I think linebacker, at, I think at 12 you're going to find a better linebacker than you find a better receiving prospect. Personally, I do think receiver's important, though, so I'd be okay with that, too. I like Calvin Ridley a lot. And then trade up from 22, and Bills could still get a quarterback. Yeah, they could. I definitely think so. I don't think you're going to see Lamar Jackson go. Um, unless the Bills pick him at 12, unless some team decides to get him as backup. But I think they could easily get him there. All right. Damn, this has been 30 minutes already, you guys. We've been going for this for a while. All right. I'm going to give it one more minute, and then I'm going to get off here. So let's see. Reading some of these comments. No, no, no. More, more than a quarterback is needed. I do agree with that. But I think the point you build around is your quarterback. And I get it. There's so many holes on this team. But quarterback is the position you build around. That's your franchise guy. You're going to make a team around the person under center. So even though we need that linebacker, even though we need that receiver, you got to get your quarterback first. That's just it for me. That's just based as a Bills fan who has seen them bottom out and take the safe pick or take something that's like a little less risky than others. It's just just make that move. Get into the top ten, man. It's just so frustrating when they miss out on these guys and they end up working out. I mean, even last year, yeah, he got hurt, but Deshaun Watson was lighting it up, and that could have been a Buffalo Bill. And I didn't like the idea of getting him at the time, but realizing it now, it's because they just didn't get their pick. They didn't go for their guy. I think they got it this year. All right, you guys. Seems like this is going to be the end of the live comment run, so I want to thank you all for listening today. This will probably be posted up on YouTube uh, later on in the week, so definitely check it out if you want to leave a comment there. I appreciate you all sitting in with me. Hope I did a good job. We're trying to get better each week. I want to give a quick shout-out to Buffalo Fanatics. Check out all of our shows coming on the Facebook Live, on our Instagram. Follow us and leave comments and get into the discussion. It's a very exciting time to be a Bills fan in this offseason. And check out today's song of the day if you haven't. It's in the link right in the top. Take care, everyone, and let's remember, let's go Bills.